Speaking of uh, Anglophobia, let's talk about Nish Kumar. Do you know who Nish Kumar is? He's the guy who got bread thrown at him for being unfunny. He is. That's yeah. exactly right. He he went and did uh, a comedy show for, I, I can't remember who it was for. It wasn't for the usual sort of woke left-wing London crowd, though. And he started trying to like roll out his college tour like material. So he's like, oh, yeah, Brexit isn't that bad. And they were like, yeah. no, we voted for Brexit. Brexit bad, Britain bad, yeah. white people bad. Yeah, isn't everything racist? Exactly. And then people started throwing bread at him. And the thing is, this was in the first like 20 seconds of his show. Like he literally just got on stage, people started throwing stuff at him. Uh, and so, anyway, this 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 uh, this chap ran. I say ran, but then I'm spoiling the good news. Uh, he 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 ran a a comedy show called The Mash Report on the BBC, which started in 2017. Uh, and it's been for quite a while now that the BBC has been under charges of being a left-wing propaganda outlet, having a severe left-wing bias. You can go back to this one in 2014, where Robert Peston was asked about this, and he just said, bollocks, is the BBC institutionally biased to the left? Uh, But the thing is, this was kind of one of those things that you couldn't really keep uh, under wraps, because it was so self-evident that they all had massive left-wing bias. And we'll just go back to 2020 with uh, Emily Maitlis, who had a rant about Dominic Cummings, and... uh, BBC was swamped with tens of thousands of complaints because she let her left-wing bias show she declared the fact that the Prime Minister's senior aide had broke the rules and Johnson's blind loyalty to Cummings allegedly led to fury, contempt and anguish from the public. Uh, the BBC deleted the viral clip of the rant from uh, Twitter and issued a statement that said it did not meet our standards of due impartiality. With no indications that she would be penalised, the broadcaster also stated staff have been reminded of the guidelines. Uh, she didn't back down on her a little rant and rave there she didn't apologize but instead thanked her followers for their support because apparently bbc anchors get to be political pundits and activists now which is nice and in 2020 there was a commons hearing about this where uh, tim davy um uh, sorry philip davis uh, was grilling uh, the bbc uh, the director general at the time which is sir david clementi uh, chairman of the corporation and he was like no no don't be ridiculous just because gary lineker is spending all of his time ranting and raving on twitter about politics and opposing brexit that doesn't mean that we have a left-wing bias you know don't don't think that this is a grand conspiracy of left-wing bias at the bbc and it's like okay well we'll get to your grand conspiracy of left-wing bias uh Philip Davies, who's uh, one of the best MPs we have, uh, said they wouldn't dare say that they voted Conservative in the BBC, uh, but there would be no issue with people saying how left-wing they are. That's completely true. And uh, Clementi was just like, well, we've got 20,000 people working here, so you'll always get some views. You know, it's like, oh, really? That's interesting. Uh, the B- the British public, of course, feel that the BBC is biased, but they can't Hang really on. decide. Sorry, because we've got 20,000 people working here, you'll sometimes get left-wing, you know, massively left-wing views. Well, well, okay. Name, I, name, I think what he means is sometimes get conservative views, to be honest. But that's what I mean. Like, when have you got fascist views on the BBC from like the far right? I mean, who's <coughs> who's doing that? Yeah. But name name me the the period where a news anchor decided to give a monologue about how much he loves the far right. Oh, I assume it's the Nick Griffin Sunday special. Yeah, <laughs> well, that doesn't exist. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, man. But uh, but yeah, so it it turns out that. Uh, People basically think the BBC is biased. Uh, for, well, 37% said they didn't. Uh, no, sorry, just under 40% said they didn't. But 37% said they did, and the rest said, well, we don't know, presumably because they don't watch the BBC like sensible people. Um, but the thing is, it, it was hard to tell which way because people were saying, well, we're left and, and right wing biased from different angles and so this would be a fairly strong argument for the centrist position except that you can do like an audit of their shows and see what the political leanings of the people who host their shows are and then suddenly you're like okay well where are the conservatives because i mean there was an audit done of bbc's comedy shows at the end of december or mid-december 2020 and uh, out of the 364 comedy shows that aired only four of them featured comedians with obvious conservative or pro-brexit beliefs do you have a percentage for that? Well, I mean... Because I'm just looking at that percent there. 74% of them had left-wing bias there. Well, the, the well, hang on. The, that, uh, the 364 shows featured four comedians, right? And that meant 
268 shows featured comedians with publicly known woke or left-leaning views. These included people like Adam Hill, Nish Kumar, and Frankie Boyle. So, Hang on, so that's just featured as well. So yeah. those four shows just had one right yeah, winger on. Yeah, panel shows with like Jeff Norcott or someone like that on. So you could have still had a leftist on as well. Oh, absolutely. They oh. absolutely, yeah, yeah. Uh, but literally four of them. Four identifiably conservative comedians, whereas 268 identifiably uh, left-wing woke comedians. Jesus. Yeah. That's how biased the BBC like, is. I knew it was bad, but I didn't realize it was that it, bad. It's unreal. Unreal. And uh, and we've got the clip of Nish Kumar's MASH report to give you an example of the, of the kind of... Uh, oh, uh, well, let's... Sorry, we'll go for this one first. Sorry, you put, I thought you were going to flip these around. Um, so Nish Kumar, I mean, he's just insufferably woke. Like, let's watch this clip. I am given a huge amount of leeway on the programme. I mean, I've described the Prime Minister of this country as a liar and a racist <laughs> on, on the programme. So that's a summary of the sort of yep. editorial guidelines that he's been put under. And again, if this was just his view or he was on a private network, no one would cover toss. No, not at all. But it's the fact that it's a publicly funded, so it is. it has a duty to be impartial on the matters of politics, Yeah, which is incredibly tough. But that's why if you want to do something that's not impartial go to a private network yeah the bbc the, the bbc shouldn't have political comedy if they're supposed to be politically neutral or if they are they should be bloody clear that they've got 50 percent one 50 percent of the other because i mean i don't even care you know like if they did have some left-wing comedians some right-wing comedians but when it's it's literally four right-wing comedians and then hundreds of left-wing comedians uh there there is something to be said but like the reason i pulled that clip is because i think that's important to note that he was saying look i don't feel like i have any kind of editorial pressure on me saying don't don't be a left-wing activist. You know, he can just turn around and say, well, Boris Johnson's a liar and a racist. And and the BBC are like, oh, very good, very good. Okay, yeah, well, he you... knows there'll be no pushback. Exactly, there's absolutely no pushback. Whereas if he was to come out and say, Boris Johnson is wonderful, I love conservatism or something like it this. It would have been a different story, yes. Hmm. Um, and so you put together this uh, little uh, clip selection of the MASH report so people can get a feel for the general tone and tenor of the show. Let's talk about the global resurgence of the far right and attempt to trace how this has happened. Now, I know what you're thinking. Wow, Nish, you are in no way qualified to weigh in on this subject. You're largely known to the public as the man stood next to Rachel Paris on a video a friend from university I don't really talk to anymore shared on Facebook, <laughs> or that guy they put on Question Time because Ramesh is now too famous. <laughs> and look, and look, I, that laugh hurts very deeply. Here he is. A man so hateful, his hands won't even make the heart symbol. <laughs> Meanwhile, Stephen Yaxley Lennon, better known as either Tommy Robinson or That Bellend, is planning a speaking tour to the US, which could earn him a million pounds. Fun fact, I dislike Tommy Robinson so much, I won't even allow him to have his picture in the little box. <laughs> that is just a mass report logo. I cannot stand that dude. I don't even want my face to be near him. I don't like it, even though he's not even there. Trump was criticised for walking on stage at one of his stupid, pointless rallies for idiots, hours after the attack <laughs> on the synagogue, to Pharrell Williams' song, Happy. Although, at this point, the only songs anyone wants Trump to walk out to are I Quit by Hepburn or Under Arrest by Debbie Harry. <laughs> Bolsonaro and Trump have praised each other, and when Tommy Robinson was in jail, one of Trump's diplomats lobbied on his behalf. And if we're going to fight this, tech companies and social media need to clamp down on hate speech. So, demanding deplatforming, defaming and, like, turning someone into a hate figure, and then saying that Trump's rallies were for stupid people. Yeah. I mean, just... Amazing. He's, he's openly anti-Voldemort, he's openly anti-Trump, he's openly anti-Bolsonaro in this segment. And it's like, okay, fine, I don't care about that if you're on a private network. Yeah. And I mean, that's the thing. The public doesn't have to fund this. This is the, the weird argument of like, oh, I'm being censored because the state won't fund me. Yeah. I mean, what a weird argument, you know? Well, that's a typical left wing argument. But he could go anywhere else and do the show. I mean, quite clearly, wow. the people who made John Oliver's show made that show. Yes. The joke structure is the same. Or, or the they, the they same. directly copied his show. Yeah, but I imagine people from that show came over and worked on this one, setting it up, Possibly, if not. Yeah. In which case, I'm sure any network would love to pick that up because it would have so many views and be so popular. Well, incidentally, he's been cancelled because his views are in the toilet. Oh, uh, what a surprise. Uh, according to Yahoo here, um, the BBC has axed the MASH reports uh, because he was crap. Uh, that's actually not the reason they gave. They said... 
that uh, the show is this being because of censorship. <laughs> the show is being shelved to make room for new programs. We're very proud of the Mash Report, but in order to make room for new comedy shows, we sometimes have to make difficult decisions, and it won't be returning. We'd like to thank all of the people involved. Blah 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 blah. Yeah. I mean, look, if we're accepting no. that if the state doesn't fund you, that's censorship, surely people not watching you is also censorship. I guess it is from that perspective. But the thing is, uh, this is on the heels of uh, the BBC's new Director General, Tim Davey, uh, saying that there must be no assumed point of view in their shows, and the BBC ne needs to nurture brilliant writers from all kinds of perspectives. Now, that's pretty amazing, because that's pretty much every left-wing comedian axed from the BBC then, isn't it? You know, if there's no assumed point of view, where they're all sitting there going, Orange Man bad, Boris bad, like... What have you got left? What have you got? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm actually in favour of that, but my, my point there would be, well, all comedy would just be axed from the BBC because yeah. that's the realm of public television. You know, if you want to privately fund that, I don't care. Sure, I mean, like, I'm damn damn for that. The BBC, quite frankly, should be an information centre that informs people about news and things like that. Yeah. I, I don't see why there's an argument for them to be doing other stuff because that could be filled by private people who want to invest in this sort of thing yes um but anyway this is obviously on the on the heels of them saying well look the bbc needs to be reformed with urgency and because it must be a universal public service and of course nish kumar is not someone who appeals universally uh, and he had a very mature response to this as well if we can see his twitter post uh, a lot of people are asking me for a comment, and here it is, and it's a picture of him with the sign, Boris Johnson is a liar and a racist. This was his response to being fired for calling Boris Johnson a liar and a racist and being excessively partisan. Oh, and also S then getting no views. And yeah, but stick to what you know, I guess. Don't break the habit of a lifetime. Uh, people obviously started memeing this, as uh, we can see with this next one. Nish Kumar is unemployed and unemployable. Oof. And the thing about this is that... It comes on the on the fact that he's never had good ratings. Like the ratings for this have always been insanely low, to the point where the BBC actually I can't seem to find any recent ratings for his show. It started at eight hundred thousand uh, for the the time slot that it was in, uh, which is twenty percent lower than it should have been. So it should have been roughly about a million people watching at that time period. He got eight hundred thousand, and I don't think it went up from there because they never released any further figures. They never got any better either. No. Like the show was just as stale as when it started. Yeah. So, um, you know, sad day. Everyone is wishing Nish Kumar their, their best. Hopefully it goes well for you, Nish. If you enjoyed this segment from the podcast of the Lotus Eaters, you can watch the full broadcast live every weekday at 1pm UK time on lotuseaters.com.